Good morning to those out on Facebook land and YouTube land. This is Pastor Pat, and I'm with the church. Hi, everybody. Say hi. Hi. We're starting our second attempt at the Sermon on the Mount uh, explanation sermon. And I'm excited because we're going to be in Matthew chapter 5, verse 3. Matthew chapter 5, verse 3. And we want to honor God in the process, and we want to make sure that we do the right thing. How many know that's important? Amen. Doing the right thing. How many know that we don't always <laughs> achieve that? But, yeah. succeed, right? but we try to do the right thing. Trying is not always that wholeheartedly because we can achieve more, don't you believe? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you right now. We ask that your hand would be upon the rest of this service, Lord, that you be with the people out there and in here, Lord. May your hand be upon them. May they receive your word in a mighty and special way. May it encourage them and draw them into you, Lord. We pray this in the mighty name. Hold my lips. Let it not be about me, Lord. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. There are things that we must do first sometimes in life. How many know that? There's organization. God says first you must this and first you must that, right? And how about when we get married, men, we've learned this, that we need to think of the lady folk first sometimes. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> and more than often than not all the time. Yeah. And it's hard to always put first things first. Yeah. How many know that it's easy to put ourselves first? We know that, right? We're human. That's just our human nature. But we also know it's very hard to put God first sometimes. There are basics that must be done before we can elaborate, uh, before we can start sometimes. First, you have to have things organized in order for it to go smooth. How many know when you try to start out on a project and you don't have all the stuff, then you go run to the store, you got to go buy all that, and then you forgot something because you didn't make a list and organize it and do the first things first, <laughs> then you got to go all the way back again, and you're like, oh, it's not worth it. I may give up sometimes, right? <laughs> Until a later date. How many know later never comes? That's right. Sometimes it doesn't. Until you have a wife that has a honeydew list and says, this will get done. Yeah. <laughs> my yeah. wife is my good organizer, or motivator, I should say. The best piano player in the world cannot play good piano without first learning the keyboard and all the notes, right? right. I mean, you know, to read music is important. Yeah. Okay? If Judith couldn't read music, we'd be in trouble. Yeah. But she could probably play, she plays both. She could play by ear and by music. Sometimes she prefers to play by ear. Yeah. <clears throat> but I know that she can follow music and that's important. But we can't, she couldn't get better. She didn't know the scales and all the keys and all the things yeah. that happen. But if you don't have an understanding of that, how can you be good at something? That's right. <clears throat> A very artistic skater <clears throat> didn't start out skating really well. Did they? No. How many like watching the Olympics for the Winter Olympics and you yeah. watch the skaters and yeah. how beautiful it is and then they do their swirls yeah. and twirls and jumps and triple axles and all that funky stuff? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I would be afraid of killing myself. Yeah. Literally. Because that looks scary and the girls flipping in the air and all that stuff and I'm like, but it's beautiful to watch. But first they had to do what? Learn how to skate. Right. Right? Before they could ever get to that point. There's an expression that I like to say in my life to remind me, first things first. Yes. How many of you know that first things first are important? Yeah. Amen. Sometimes you just got to do things first before you can accomplish other things. If Keith went into a computer, if he didn't first log in, he couldn't do anything, right? Is that impossible if you don't log in, isn't it? Yeah, you can't do much. You can't do much. So first things first, you got to do the first step, log in. Well, let's log into God's word, word and do the first things first. How many know that's important? We begin, begin with the first verse of the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus begins by putting first things first. He says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 3, it says... Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
Think about that. Blessed is the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. He had to first put this verse out there that the whole sermon will build from, from this verse right here. The whole thing is built from those words right there. Yeah. This is the first step of becoming a Christian as we blessed are those who are poor in spirit. Jesus is telling us the secret of living a righteous life and being truly happy by being poor in spirit. You can well guess by being poor in spirit does not mean to have a poor spirit. No. Now come on. No. Jesus isn't encouraging us to have a bad attitude. How many know that's important? <laughs> have you ever been around somebody with a bad attitude that just kind of spreads? Yeah. you never been around some? I have. Uh, yeah. I mean, you've had that bad attitude that just kind of spreads, right? This is an attitude that we have in our spirit sometimes. What is our attitude towards God? Uh-oh. Pastor's getting there. The word translated for poor here is the word used for someone who is poor and so poor he has to beg for it. I have known poor people who didn't have much but were able to survive. The person described here by Jesus is poor so poor that they continually ask him for help. D.A. Carson said, Poverty of spirit, then, is a personal acknowledgement of spiritual bankruptcy. How many know a spiritual bankruptcy is something we need to have in order to have God's spirit in our lives? We can't do it on our own, right? No, we can't do it on our own. You realize that you have no righteousness and you're not good enough for God. You realize that you do not have the righteousness to live righteously within yourself. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's not always easy to admit. <laughs> right? Your only hope is to cry out to God for help because that's where your help comes from. This, my friends, is true humility when we have to call out to the name of the Lord. Call out on Him. He says, call to me. Amen. Yeah. Here's what we need to become. A spiritual beggar. Number one, know that, that He, meaning us, is nothing. Yeah. We are nothing. Know that we have nothing. Yeah. Know that we have to ask God for everything. Yeah. Yeah. There are at least three areas that are affected by being a poor in spirit. This is the number one thing. The number one thing that is affected by being poor in spirit is salvation. If we don't humble ourselves before God, how can we ever expect to be saved for God? Yeah. Amen. And by God. Yeah. Amen? So first things first, right? Yeah. Blessed is the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. First things first. Salvation doesn't come from us, but it comes from who? The Lord. Amen. Who did Jesus come to save? <laughs> he did not come to save righteous people, did he? Nope. Nope. He came to save the unrighteous people who make and to make them righteous. If we look in Luke chapter 5, Luke chapter 5, verse 30 through 32. This is an eye-opening scripture for everybody to look at. Luke chapter 5, verse 32, or 30 through 32. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law who belonged to their sect complained to his disciples, Why do you eat and drink with the tax collectors and the sinners? Yeah. Next one. Jesus answered them, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, yeah. but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. He didn't call for pious self-righteousness. 
He didn't call for any of that. He called the ones that were, he was, do you know that he always degraded them because they knew the truth but effect, effectively didn't live the truth? Yeah. How many know that's, that's important? We, we got to live the truth, not just know the truth. Yeah. It's got to be revealed in us and through us yeah. to other people so they can see that's why you can't be called what? A hypocrite. Yeah. A hypocrite emits some, and I'm a hypocrite. You know, let me explain to you why. Because I admit that I am a selfish person at times and fail to convey the love of Christ. But what I will not accept is that I am a continual hypocrite. I can be hypocritical at times because I know not what I'm doing at times until the Holy Spirit says, Excuse me. Hello? Really? Come on. Uh -huh. Really? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then effectively, it makes me realize how dumb I am. Uh -huh. yeah. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about me personally. So I'm picking on Pat. Uh -huh. He came to save those who were lost. The great degradation of sin is something we must recognize and understand. Sin is flesh. Yes. Yeah. The fleshful side of man. When we let flesh control, guess what? God can't. If we look in Luke chapter 19, verse 8 through 10. Luke chapter 19, verse 8 through 10. It says, But Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor, and if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusations, which we know tax collectors did, right? They had a reputation. I restore fourfold, four times what I stole from them. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he has also is, is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. Thank you, Lord. Jesus said, today is the day of salvation in this home. Why did he say that? This house has salvation because he reconciled with God, not with man. Yep. Yep. He recognized that he was a wretched, wicked person. And it wasn't Jesus having to do anything other than to show the truth. How many love the truth but don't want to hear the truth? Come on, there's so many Christians out there, they want something to tickle their ears more than to hear the truth. That's the right. truth will set you free. So why are we let, listening to people that are tickling our ears? We must be set free, and who the Son sets free is what? Free indeed. Let's not be bound by the things that make us feel good about ourselves. Christ didn't come to make you feel good about yourself. They came, he came to make you feel great in Him. See, you never live until you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If Jesus came to save the sinners, who must admit that you are, you have to admit that you're a sinner, first of all, to become saved, right? Jesus came to save the lost. We also must admit that we're what? Lost. To truly be saved, you must begin by admitting that you are a poor, lost sinner with no righteousness within yourself but need God's forgiveness so you can have righteousness in Him. How many know that's important? Yep. Amen? As a poor lost sinner, you turn to a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, the perfect Son of God who died for our sins. Yes. Am I right? Yeah. If we look in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18 through 21, Second Corinthians chapter five, verse eighteen through twenty-one. Second Corinthians five, eighteen through twenty-one. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That means the church. The church is the ministry of reconciliation. Why aren't we reconciling things? Yeah. Oops. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. 
not imputing their trespasses to them, and he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he has made himself who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. If we turn to the Savior and place our faith and trust in him, he will be with us forevermore. We find eternal life with him. If we look in John chapter 3, verse 36. John chapter 3, verse 36. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Remains on him. Means stays with him forever. It's a choice. This is one of my favorite stories in the Bible that describes something so true in the church today as much as it did back then. In Luke chapter 18, verses 10 through 14, Luke chapter 18, verses 10 through 14. If you don't have a Bible, there's one in front of you next to the songbook. If there's not one there, somebody can get you one if you need one. Luke chapter 18, verse 10 through 14 says, Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust adulterers, or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess, and the tax collector stands afar off, would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his chest, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Yeah. That says something strong right there. Why do we come to church? Is it to show, to keep up with the Joneses, or is it to serve Jesus Christ? Is it to honor man? Or is it to honor the man, God himself? One showed his pride. The other showed his humility. The one who humbled himself before God was the one that was looked upon as being righteous from God. Yes. It is the person who humbles himself towards God and turns to Christ by faith. Poor in spirit, broken and spilled out, knowing he deserves nothing from God that is truly saved by God through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. The second thing that is important, first things first, salvation. The second is, oh, this gets, gets this word, not many people like this. I don't care who it is. Submission. Mm -hmm. I'm not submitting to that person. Mm -mm. A Christian who is poor in spirit is also submissive to God. He realizes that he has done nothing to save himself. He realizes that he can do nothing on his own. He realizes that apart, apart from Christ, he is truly nothing. Do 
You can have all the money and the fame in the world, but truly you are the loneliest person in the world because you don't have Jesus yeah. in charge of your life. <clears throat> those people. What causes us to fail to be submissive? Right. What causes us to not be poor in spirit? Uh-oh, the pastor's going to lay it on us. It's our own selfish pride. Yeah. That's a hard thing is pride doesn't want us to submit. We had a lady in our church, I've told this before, but she refused to say honor and obey her husband and her vows. Guess what happened to that marriage? Didn't work. Didn't work. She's had several girl or seven boys. Well, she had a girlfriend. She's had boyfriends and now she has a husband finally. And he's had several girlfriends and now he's remarried to somebody else. How much brokenness could have probably been avoided yeah. if she would allow herself to be submissive to God? I'm not, I'm not talking about the husband, but submissive to Him. Yeah. Pride cometh before the fall. How many have heard that before? Oh, yeah. It is our pride that makes us think that we are so important. You ever been around somebody that thinks they're important? <laughs> you ever seen... You ever seen a short guy being in charge of something? Yeah. <laughs> Boy, they're in charge. You know why? I'm going to tell you why. Tall people have every opportunity to get more respect for doing less work than anybody else. And they get elevated and promoted because they have authority figure because they're taller. Let me explain to you as a short man in the business world. When I was there, I had to work four times harder than anybody else to get to where I was going. Yeah. But I had to learn the most important thing. It's not the me being the ruler. It's him ruling me. That's right. For me to be elevated. Yeah. Once we finally get there. We'll... Then I learned when I submitted myself to Christ. And didn't let the... My boss used to say, you should be proud of what you're doing. I said, no, 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 no. If it wasn't for me and the crew... We would never have any of this yeah. because they did the work. I'm just leading them. No, you are a great leader. I said, no, but I'm a great follower. Yeah. And I must do what I am asked to do. Yeah. I must be willing to put in the work. Yeah. Ooh, that's a hard thing to say. It is our pride that often causes us to have hurt feelings. Oh, come on. Yeah. Yeah. The church gets hurt. Yeah. Why are you hurt? Because Satan's fighting you. Didn't Christ say he's going to fight you? He's your, the enemy of your soul? Isn't he the one that's going to destroy you? It says he's walking around like, seeking, like a roaming lion, seeking whom he may devour. Why are we surprised that he's trying to devour us? Well, why did it happen? He's trying to. Well, how do we protect ourselves? Under the hand of God, submitting ourselves to him. How do we become safe? Where safety is in Christ, where there's no safety in anywhere else in this world. Yeah. What if I die? What if you die? You gain. Yeah. Right? In the long yeah. run, you got to be with Jesus. It's okay. It's okay to die. Jerry and I were talking. We were jealous of Wendy. Yeah. We know where she's at. Yeah. She's with Jesus. How could you ever wish her back? Yeah. yeah. She's ultimately healed forevermore. Yeah. Amen. Amen. She knows where and Jerry at. knows where she's at. You know, and you you can't wait to get yeah, there. I can go there. She can't come here, but I can go there. But you sure can go <laughs> visit, right? That's Permanently right. make residence in heaven. Got no reservation. Because we think that we should have things our way ends up destroying the way. Yes. To the cross yeah. of Jesus. Yeah. It is our pride that makes us worry about ourselves and our own well-being. We look out for number one. Yeah. Oops. It is our pride that causes us to make financial decisions that make us feel good until yeah. we have to pay the price. Yeah. Right? Okay. It is our pride that causes us to play with toys and to entertain ourselves instead of pleasing God. It is our pride that causes us to be critical of others. It is our pride that makes us refuse to change 
what we know that should be changed in our hearts. How do we become poor in spirit? Number one, compare ourselves to Jesus and no one else. Yeah. When we compare ourselves favorably to others, we usually end up feeling pretty good about ourselves. Yeah. When we compare ourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ, we will come away very humble. Yeah. James 4.10 James 4.10 says, Humble yourselves in the sight of God, or of the Lord, and He shall lift you up. He will lift you up when you humble yourselves before Him. He didn't say you will lift yourself up. Pull your, how many have heard this? Pull yourself up by your bootstraps yep. mm -hmm. and keep on keeping on? The American way. That's the American way. Jesus says, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and He shall lift you up. He'll pull you up. See, Jesus is not so concerned about what you did to fail as much as where you run after you fail. He's really not that much concerned about that. He knew you are going to fail because you're human. He's more concerned where you go right after you fall. Do you go to Dr. Jesus? Or you'll go to doctor friends that will help you lick your wounds and say, oh, it'll be all right. We don't get healed because we don't let the healer heal us. Right. True. Surrender, if we, number two, number two of becoming poor in spirit. Surrender your rights to God. When you have no rights, there's no reason to get upset with anything. Mm. How many like him to preach him today? Yeah. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, Holy, acceptable to God, which is your what, Jerry? Reasonable. Reasonable service. And do not be comforted or conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, yeah. that you may pr prove what is that is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Yeah. That you may prove God's word is true in your life. Yeah. Number three of becoming poor in the spirit. Live to please God alone. Live to please God alone and only God. Warren Wiersbe once said, The person who is poor in spirit is not disturbed by the attitudes or criticism of others but because he lives to please God alone. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 18 through 21. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 18 through 21. He administers justice for the fatherless and the widow and loves the stranger, giving him food and clothing. Therefore, Love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God. You shall serve Him, and to Him you shall hold fast and take oaths in His name. He is your praise. He is your God, who has done for you these great and awesome things which your eyes have seen. He is your God. He is your praise. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Number four, become a poor in the spirit. Look continually to God and not to yourself to fulfill every need. Yeah. Remember that song? He's all that I need. Yeah. He's all I need. Well, my Jesus is all I need. 
Does he become yeah. all you need? Come on. Yeah. I'm trying to hope, help you understand. Understand what the Word of God is trying to say. Yeah. Jesus was trying to say this to us. If we become a hum humble beggar before God, we, re we realize that unless He provides it, we get nothing. Yeah. How yeah, many know that that it's important to say that I'm undone and it doesn't matter, God? <laughs> it's not about me. It's not about my ways. It's not about the things that I do. It's about the things that you do in my life and I can't do it and I can't move forward without you being in charge of it. Amen. Psalms 123, verse 2. Psalms 123, verse 2. Behold, as the eyes of servants look unto the hand of their master, and as the eyes of a maiden unto the hand of their mistress, so our eyes wait upon the Lord our God until that he have mercy upon us. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 through 8. Matthew Chapter 7, verse 8, 7 through 8. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. Didn't say might, it says ask, will receive. And he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be open unto them. Amen? Amen. Aren't you glad that it will be opened unto you? Yeah. Yeah. If you're seeking, you'll find it, right? If you're seeking for things of this world, guess what? You'll find it. You'll find yourself in a lot of trouble. <laughs> yeah. We've done that. I've done that. I was a good sinner. Yes, Mazza? I'll do it. Feels good. Until I had paid the price. But with Jesus, I didn't have to pay the price. Yeah. I'm clean. Yes. I'm clean. Yes. And I'm Praise free. Lord. Thank God I'm free. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Last one of these of the three main categories of, of fulfilling God's Jesus' first words, blessed are the poor in spirit, yeah. for they shall inherit the heaven. <clears throat> Service. Boy, here we go. Service unto God. Not just serving, or not just having a relationship, but serving Him. The person who is truly poor in spirit is available to God, even through, even though he realizes that he in himself is nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I am nothing. Right? Yeah. Consider the prophet Isaiah. In Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 through 8. Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne, high and lifted up, and the train of His robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphims. Each one had six wings. With two had covered His face, with two covered His feet, and with two He flew. And... One cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of His glory. And the posts of the doors were shaken by the voice of Him who cried out. And the house was filled with smoke. So I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphims flew to him, or to, to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with the tongs from the altar of heaven. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away, and your sin is purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. 
See, so many of us want to have the forgiveness and the cleansing of the lips, but we don't want to do service for Jesus. We want to sit in our pews or in our homes and be happy and, ooh, kumbaya. Well, it don't work that way sometimes. We need to be the light unto the world. It's the beam of light that is in us that can help set the captives free and that can bring reconciliation to the people of this world, to Christ. See, we are the answer, and we don't want to be. Amen. Yeah, the obligation on us is that we will serve Him and be in service to Him and that we would be the light up to this world and we would go into this world and have loving and kindness and the heart of God for the compassion of them who are lost and dying in this world. Yes. Aren't you glad Jesus didn't shrink when yeah. it came to His obligation? quiet in here we deserve to be quiet because we don't measure up that's right like we should that's right i'm not picking on you i'm not picking on anybody but what i'm saying is when we use the measuring stick of god we can never measure up but with christ in me yes come on that's but with christ me. in me Christ is the ruler of my life. Makes up the difference that I'm short. Yeah. In my life. Yeah. That should compel you in your heart yeah. to want to reach others and tell them the good news. The good news. Yeah. Jesus loves you. Yes, he does. Amen. Amen. And remember what Peter said when he Jesus gave him a, a miraculous catch of fish. Yeah. If we look in Luke chapter 5, verse 8. Luke chapter 5, verse 8. I'm almost done. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees and said, Depart from me, for I am a sinner, a sinful man, O Lord. This is my favorite next part. The response in, in Luke chapter 5, verse 10. Luke chapter 5, verse 10. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. Yeah. He changed his profession. He changed him from being a fisherman. Fisherman now became his hobby. But his profession became... Seekers of men, Amen. fishers of men, by being a lighthouse of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news, he became something different because what was in him could not be contained by just him because God wanted to use him to reach others just like him, a sinner that was lost and now is found. Amen. You know, it's really easy to make excuses and not to be used by God. Excuses are, we got tons of them. You know, I had crew people that I used to say, your excuses are like Lincoln is on pennies. Because there's thousands and millions of them. We can use an excuse. And then my second saying was, an excuse is an excuse only if you choose to use it as that. Yeah. Yeah. It can be a learning curve. <laughs> Don't use an excuse to get out of your obligations. That's right. Or your commitments. Right. Hello? That's it. Commitments is the second thing. <clears throat> and most of our excuses are horrible anyways. We can't hold water, right? No. It always comes back to pride sometimes, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, it Boy, does. there goes that word again, pride, preacher. Yes, you think he is. <laughs> the great men of the Bible who were used by God, the women that were used by God, who recognized their inability to do anything on their own, but they had to submit to God and God alone. Yes. They allowed God to work mighty and miracles through them yeah. because they said, not my will, but yours. Yeah. This is not brainwashing. This is a choice. I've heard many people, oh, the church brainwash you think, make to control society. The Bible was not written to control society. 
the Bible was written to teach you how to defeat the enemy. That's right. Amen. And how to live not just a joy, but a joy, a, a life, but a life un, and with a joy that's unspeakable yeah. and full of glory. Amen. Not just one of those things, oh, God did something good. No, God did something good. Yes, he did. And I got something to tell you. Yeah. He loves you and he'll do the same for you. Yes, he will. That's when the Holy Spirit can start opening hearts. It's not your responsibility to come and to bring them to Jesus. It's your responsibility to show them Jesus. That's, that's it. And tell them the good news by living it. Yeah. A it. living testimony of what God can do if you just let Him do it. Yeah. It's not my job to change anybody. It's my job to inform them who changes you. That's right. And that's Jesus Christ. Yeah. And him crucified and resurrected from the dead. Yeah. And who's at the right hand of the Father right now. Yeah. Beseeching him on your behalf. Yeah. Lord Jesus. Are you willing to do the exact same in your life? Oh, preacher, it's easy to say yes. Mm -hmm. But the harder thing is to do. Yeah. See, God doesn't want lip service. What does he want? He wants true service. That's right. Of your heart and yeah. of your life. Are you ready to be used by God? Yeah. Let's become, by letting first things be first, yeah. become poor in spirit. Yeah. Let God be God in us. Yeah. See, it's not who is better than who. It's not who makes more money. It's not about who drives the nicest cars. I mean, no, the car don't get it done, but Jesus can. It's nice to have a home to live in, isn't it? But it doesn't have to be the Taj Mahal, does it? No. How many know it's nice to have nice things? Yeah. It is. How many like creatures' comforts like hot running water, flushing toilets, right? A roof over your head so you're dry. Yeah. Heat in the house so you're warm. Yeah. Air conditioning. We're able to do a lot of things on our own. But how, how much better would it be if we let God be in charge of those things? Yes. If we let Jesus be in charge, like we say, Jesus, take the wheel. Yes. Jesus, Savior, pilot me. How can he pilot something he has no control? That's right. See, the Holy Spirit's a gentleman. He won't force you to do something you don't want to do. That's it. But he will remind you why you should do what you need to do. Yes. Sometimes people feel like it's a bat, but it's not. It's just a simple tap. That's right. But we get offended because of our pride. Yeah. Or our unwillingness to change. How about our unwillingness to trust yeah. that he'll do what he said he'd do? Yeah. Or how about not believing the blessed assurance that we have that Jesus is ours? Yeah. Yeah. Pastor, why are you been preaching like this? Because first things come first. Yes, they do. Let's come back to what it's all about. It's not about you and it's not about me. It's not about this building. It's not about anything here. It's about Jesus, Jesus. Christ and what he did on that cross over 2,000 years ago. Yep. And in that grave was shaken and stirred so much that people around Jesus resurrected as well. Yep. Not just Jesus. That's how much power was in the resurrection. Yep. That resurrection is a promise that that tomb is empty forevermore. Yeah. And you will never have to be trapped in the tomb of your life. You can be set free from the captive's doors that are holding you back because Jesus can be in control. Yeah. I think this was a good sermon today. Good. Because, because God's trying to deal with the hearts. Yeah. I mean, know that He starts with me. Yeah. Hello? Hello? It starts here. Yeah. God wants us to be real yes. with Him. And He wants to be real in you. That's exactly. He wants to be the real God that is all 
all-sufficient in everything He does for us. We have to make a choice. Either He's the Lord of all or He's not Lord of anything. I implore you, if you're struggling today, we're going to pray here in just a moment. To say something profound in your life. Oh, I've said it before, preacher. No, say something profound and have meaning behind it with action today. Lord Jesus, be the Lord of my life. Yes. I relinquish the responsibility of the outcome to you. Yes. Yes. My obligation is only to you and the Father and the Holy Spirit. Lord, I will yield myself to you. And I will not let my pride get in the way of my service to you. From this day forward, I make a proclamation that in my life is no longer mine, but it's yours. And I serve you forevermore from this moment on. God, remind me when I forget my oath to you today. Change me. Make me a new creature in you. Bring reconciliation unto me so I can help reconcile others to you. Amen. Today is the day of the Lord. Every day from this day forward must start and finish in Him. If the church wants to be victorious, it has to let the victor be in control. Death has no sting anymore because of Jesus. Victory. Victory. See, victory is mine, saith the Lord. Come on, say that. Victory is mine, saith the Lord. So if I'm an inheritance, I'm a I'm a child of God. Victory is mine in the Lord. Come on, say it. Victory is mine in the Lord. You've already won. You're on the winning team. Jesus is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And I refuse to let him down anymore. Amen. Be resolute in your decision. I'm a resolute American. How many of you know yeah. that I love America? Yeah. I don't love everything about America, but I love the land that I live in, that God put me here yeah. to freely speak how I feel about Him with no fear. Yeah. Many people laid their lives. It was paved with blood. It was not free. It was. It was. Our freedom is not free. Amen. Jerry, you served with some men you never saw again. That's right. That's right. David, you probably did too. Yeah. I'm sure you did too, Keith. Yeah. It wasn't free. No. For me, it didn't. It wasn't free for God either. No. To have victory over sin. That's right. It cost him something. Yeah, it cost him spotless lamb that will forever be marked with the shame yeah. of what sin did and what God had to do to fulfill his obligation to his law. But Jesus' precious wounds, come on. When God sees them, he remembers why he did that. And he shows mercy because God is bound to his word for you and I. Aren't you grateful for that? I am. I am. May God bless you. May the wolf never darken your doors. Yes. May sickness stay away. May provision be there at all times. May your oil jars never go empty. Yes. May your flour mills never go dry yes. with no wheat. May you always have bread in your home yes. because of God and his goodness for you. Yes. I bless you today. God bless.